against Victorian Liberal leader Michael O'Brien has failed to get off the ground with a spill motion by frontbencher or former frontbencher who since resigned Brad Batten was defeated by 22 votes to nine. In the wake of the failed coup, O'Brien has pledged to shake up his front bench as the opposition continues to struggle to land a blow against the Andrews government. I have an overwhelming majority and what it means is that we are focused on Victorians. That's, that's where Victorians want us to be focused. They don't want us to be talking about ourselves. I'm not interested in talking about ourselves. I'm interested in the concerns, the needs, the vision for this state. That's what, I, that, that's what keeps me up at night. That's what gets me up every single morning. It's what I'm committed to. It's what my team's committed to. As I said, Batten has resigned. So too has Ryan Smith and perhaps another one. I'm getting late mail. Perhaps another one. So there could be three resigning from the Liberal front bench. For more on this, I'm joined now from Melbourne by Associate Editor of the Australian newspaper, Mr John Ferguson. John O'Brien says he's got the overwhelming support of his party room to stay as leader, but we both know what happens to leaders in this sort of situation. Even if the initial spills fail, do you think the Libs will get behind him and he will stay there until the next election, which we know is due uh, November next year, or is he in trouble? Oh, Peter, I think it's inevitable that he's in trouble. The, the question really is, basically, the anti-O'Brien um, vote amongst the MPs has split, and that's the reason why the spill motion didn't get up. They believe the combined uh, anti-O'Brien forces believe they have up to 18 votes, and so basically um, Brad Batten got nine votes, but there are another nine that are still floating around. So the question will be whether that the grouping, the entire grouping can get together and we're not really sure whether that's the case, that they will. So why did Batten go off half-cocked? It doesn't seem to me when this, uh, when this spill motion was put around last night that they had uh, done the numbers, hit the phones and all the usual stuff you'd expect. There's a very strong push uh, amongst uh, several MPs to get former leader Matthew Guy to run and I think what's happened is that Brad Batten decided that he, he would go early, basically, what you would, you would think is almost like an internal a ambush, but it was a really bit silly because if you didn't, you know, if you had the combined vote, then, then the spill motion would have got up and uh, Michael O'Brien would have been in trouble. But so really what you have is almost a, a, a sub-factional, and I know I should use that term, term carefully, but almost a sub-factional push within the party room to, to mm. defeat uh, Matthew Guy before he get a, got a chance to run. Well, now that Batten's a spent force, though, Ryan Smith's out off the front bench. Does that mean Guy has a stronger chance uh, when the inevitable happens? Well, look, at, as you know, it all comes down to the numbers, and I suspect that Matthew Guy will need at least some uh, or, or, or a majority of the numbers that, that Batten produced today in order to have a successful run at the leadership. Now, mm. I think it's all a bit premature. I think basically the plan really was to go at the end of this year or early next year, and, and by which time a lot of things will have changed. So you can't really um, make any uh, you know, ironclad sort of forecasts of what will happen, but I think it's fair to say that Michael O'Brien will be un under pressure the whole way through to the next election in 2022. Yeah, but just tell me out here, though, right now, the most powerful Premier in Victoria for many decades, you know, the bloke that's got such a dominant force inside the Labor Party who has his, you know, micromanaging fingers across everything, he's literally on his back. He'll be out for six-plus weeks. It would be fascinating to see how the Labor government manages uh, without the heavy hand of Andrews on the day-to-day -day of ministers and the machinery and all the other things that we've seen over the past you know, 12 plus months, why on earth pick this time when the Premier's the most vulnerable to blow up their own side? Well, that just tells you that uh, it was pretty uh, ham-fisted, uh, this attempt to, to, to go now. I mean, now, look, I, I think, see, I have a view that basically if, you're, if you were running strategy to uh, get rid of uh, the Liberal leader, you'd be waiting because I think... A lot of things have to play out. I mean, JobKeeper comes off. Um, there's no guarantees in Victoria that there won't be another wave of the virus because mm. the government has shown that it's quite quite handy at enabling these things to happen. So 
I, I think the conventional wisdom and the view within the uh, within the party, for those that want to get rid of O'Brien, was that they should wait until the end of the year, or early next year. And I and I think I think it'll be interesting. Uh, we should talk a little bit about Jeff Kennett. I think he's well. Just yeah, let's go to that who, because. Some people have tried to get him to run again. He's in his early 70s. He's not interested in going back into the parliament. But there's a real push, isn't there, to, to get him to be the president of the Liberal Party. Tell me more. Yeah, well, look, I, if I were to put money on it, I'd say that uh, Kennett will become uh, uh, the next president within probably within months when the next state council is held. Uh, mm -hmm. that, that's my mail that he, he will run. But w with... Um, with Kennett, who was Premier for, for the younger uh, members of the audience in the 90s, for most of the 90s, uh, a real reformist, you know, you know, hard, uh, hard driving. Um, he transformed Victoria after what were some really, really um, a, a terrible recession in the early 90s. So I think Kennett will probably be the president. Uh, I think he will certainly have a crack at it. And I think if he wants to run, uh, which I believe he does, then he he will get virtually a clear run at it, Peter. It was what 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 I believe right. will happen. Well, we'll watch it all closely. Uh, lots of things are happening. I think the Liberal Party tonight is pretty wounded, but we'll see where where they go from here. Associate editor at the Australian, John Ferguson. Thank you for your time. Thank you.